G'day, my name is Brett Naseby and welcome to On The Farm. And today we are here with Paul at a Murray Cod Farm. So, welcome Paul. Oh, thank you. How are you? Pretty good. So, I guess the big question is, what is a Murray Cod Farm? Murray Cod Farm. Well, we grow Murray Cod, we grow fish in these ponds, and um, we grow them out for people to eat. So, how do you farm Murray Cod? Well, we farm them in these cages you can see behind us. Um, we keep them up off the pond, out of the mud, um, otherwise they get all dirty and grubby. Uh, so we keep them nice and clean and happy and uh, keep them all together and feed them every day. I've just noticed earlier that some of the ponds are different colours. Why is the water different colours? So the colours change depending on how much algae is in the water and how much mud's hanging around in the suspension in the water. So we have cycles, the, we have lots of sunshine, they get very green, uh, so there's lots of algae growing in the water and when there's not quite so much sunshine, uh, there's not so much algae, so it gets very brown. Uh, algae is about produces about 70% of our oxygen in the water, which fish breathe oxygen, so um, that helps us keep them alive and keep them happy. Um, the turbidity, when it gets very muddy and brown, um, is good to, to uh, make them feel safe from birds. Ah uh, yes, because we noticed quite a few birds here, so, um, so how do you keep the fish safe from birds? Well, we do put nets over the ponds to stop the birds from getting in there. Um, they do like to eat on them, they like to feed on the fish. Uh, so um, more than that, there's not much else we can do. Some animals get sick, so how do you know if your Murray Cod are fit and healthy? Well, we look at them if they look healthy, um, they look nice and clean. Um, we keep them healthy by keeping the water really nice for them, perfect for them. Um, but they do get bugs from time to time and we have to check them, so we have to take a little sample of their little gills um, and have a look under a microscope and see if there's any bad guys there looking after them. So how would you know if a Murray Cod was sick? Uh, they come up to the surface and they don't feed very much. The first indicator, like you and I, um, when we're not feeling very well, we don't eat very much. You know, we'll, we'll say to mum and dad that we're not too keen on having breakfast, uh, we feel a bit crook, don't want to go to school. These guys are very much like that. They'll come up to the surface, they can't talk to us, but that's how they tell us. They come up and say, I'm not hungry, but there's something wrong with me. And so then we check them. Great. Okay, so can you tell me what these things that are spinning around, what do they do? Uh, the paddle wheels, um, you can see them throwing water up into the air, so when they're you get small droplets up into the air, it gets lots of oxygen in it and then it falls back down into the water and keeps the pond nice and stirred so the water's always moving and fish like moving water. So here's the fun part of today, we've actually got some questions from some school students. We've got some, um, uh, some questions from Year 3-4 at Lake Wang and Public School and we've also got a couple of questions from Wagga Wagga Public School. One of the questions here is from William, it says, how many fish can a fish farm have at one time? Well, that depends on how much oxygen's in the water. Um, if, if you get too many fish in the water, they, they've got to share all that oxygen. It's like having a lot of people in a room. Um, you need, everyone needs oxygen, so we can, there's, the number is, could be big or it could be small. Depends on the fish. Um, but in these ponds, we could have anywhere to 30,000 fish sitting in them. And this one now is from Mia from Lake Wangan again. And so where do the fish come from? Well, we have a hatchery um, that's not far from here in New South Wales. So we get the uh, mum and dads and we put them in a little drum and they uh, make eggs. And then we hatch those eggs and we feed them little Artemia, so little sea monkeys, um, and get them about this big. Uh, then they come into our nursery and uh, then eventually into the ponds. I've got a question for you. Why do fish do this? That's, <laughs> that's usually an indicator they're not very happy. Um, they call that, when they do it on the surface, they call that piping. Um, that means that in the water there's not enough oxygen, so they try to move their gills in the air a bit to try and get a little bit of oxygen out of the air. It's, um, it's kind of them gasping for air. They don't do it normally. Um, other times they may be looking for food on the surface. They go around on the surface of an evening uh, looking for insects, but most of the time that'll tell you you don't have enough oxygen in the water. Okay, so now we have a question from Georgie Mackey at Wagga Wagga Public School and she wants to know what was the biggest Murray Cod in Australia? That's a really good question. I don't think anyone really knows the biggest one. We've seen them up at around about 30 kilo, which is, they're huge. They're like the size of me and I'm two metres tall. Um, they're very, very big fish, but they grow for a very, very long time. So they live a long time. No one knows how long they live. It could be 50 years. Uh, we don't know. I mean, the fish we have, you know, they might get up to, say, two kilo, two and a half kilo. It's not a very big fish. Um, and that takes, you know, two and a half years. So it takes them a long time to grow and no one really knows the answer. Now, I so see you have a boat out here on some of these ponds. What is the boat for? Uh, that's when we want to go fishing. No, the boat's sort of, if we need to get around the pond and do things, then uh, we use the boat, especially for, you know, we'll put traps in the pond to get rid of excess, uh, the fish that escape. We do have escapees from time to time. Um, but it's just for maintenance on the ponds. So what's the longest a Murray Cod has escaped for? 
Uh, in one of the ponds, we've had them up to eight kilo or 11 kilo, somewhere around about there, and that's about five or six years. Are the Murray Cod friends with each other? Uh, no. Um, Murray Cod aren't a schooling fish, which means they don't run around together. They're an ambush predator, so they'll sit in under a log in the river and wait for something to swim past to eat. Um, and if it happens to be one of their friends that are swimming past, they'll eat them too. So they're a, they're a top order predator in the food chain, so that means they're at the top of the food chain and they eat everything else in the river. Thinking about what they eat in the river, what do you feed them here? Uh, we feed them a fish pellet. When they start, as I said, they're you know, little Artemia sea monkeys. Uh, and then we, we put them on sort of um, fish trash, if you like. It's sort of like, I don't know, tuna. Um, and then we get them onto a fish pellet. It's a manufactured pellet um, that's got all their dietary needs, vitamins and minerals in it to keep them healthy. Kind of like little vitamin tablets, essentially. Yeah. Fantastic. I think that's all we have time for today, so thank you very much for your time, Paul, and thank you to all of the um, students for your wonderful questions, and we hope to see you next time.